Hello, my friends. Jacob is here once again. Thank you for pressing play, for spending some awesome time with me today. We have quite a bit to talk about. There's a lot of madness going on in the world. A lot of madness. A lot of people are very concerned. People are troubled in their hearts. And, you know, the scripture said that this was going to happen. They said it was going to be happening. Men's hearts will fail themselves with fear. And, uh, you know, with all the kooky stuff that we see going on all over the place, <laughs> It's completely understandable. I mean, it's completely understandable. The stuff that I've been seeing, it's, uh, it's breaking my heart. It's breaking my heart. But that's okay, because we got a lot of things to talk about today that would break the heart of any person who is moral and just and kind. The world is, uh, seems to have been completely turned over to madness. Madness, I tell you. But that's okay, because here, you're all here for a reason, right? I'm Jacob, if you're new to the channel. Thank you very much. I talk about the stuff that's going on in the world, and I try to find a way to, d to draw you out of all the fear of it, and to bring you into the, uh, the absolute wonder that is found when you have faith and more. Because we know that God works all things together for our good. Even if you got China, who's, uh, you know, rewriting the Bible and turning Jesus into a person who maybe murders somebody and calls himself a sinner. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to get into that in a sec. With the world the way it is, it's no wonder everything's so nutty right now. So nutty. So many interesting things going on. You know, Jared Kushner, he's uh, nominated for the uh, Nobel Peace Prize. That's right. Jared, you know him and Ivanka. You know, the uh, aide to uh, Donald Trump, who still got all this stuff done, even though supposedly the entire world has turned against Donald Trump and cut him off from everything. Still Jared Kushner, his most, you know, prominent figure in his you know, administration, he's uh, being nominated by uh, Lee Zeldin, I think is the guy's name, here from Strong Island. He's nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. That made the news, the Abraham Accords, which, as you know, is a way to normalize relations between Israel and all of these other countries. And man, it's, it's becoming very normalized, as they say. <laughs> These agreements there were the uh, UAE, Sudan, Morocco, Bahrain. Is that the way you say it? Bahrain? Bahrain? Bahrain, probably. Bahrain. Bahrain. That's what I say sometimes. Bah! It's raining. No, I like the rain. Without the rain, there wouldn't be any flowers. Yeah, so these accords were in uh, 2020. Get ready to see a literal temple going up. They're already working on, they have this one place where everybody's going to come and worship. It's already a thing, this one world religion. You know, they got this thing called the... Uh, the Guidestones in uh, in Georgia, and they got yeah, you're probably aware of it, right? They they call it like the Ten Commandments of like the New World Order. Some of the things that they have on there are very questionable, like you know maintaining humanity under like 500 million, which is not a lot of people considering we're you know pushing eight billion. It's, you know, guiding reproductive health, guiding people spiritually, coming up with a one world, you know, faith, uh, language. So this is the, uh, this is the direction all of these people are going. Powerful people, I got to tell you, some of them are really sick. Some of them are, like, I'd say probably a lot of them are really sick. We see this, right? We see this happening. We see, we see, be, be, I think Fox News just did something on that lady who uh, supported the uh, the trunkers, honk, honk, hit the horn. And 
I, I think she like sent two hundred fifty dollars of her own money, and uh, you know they they doxed her, and they're coming after her. It's scary. It's tyrannical. What's going on? It's breaking my heart to see all this stuff happening. So they're gonna, you know, anybody who sends like fifty bucks, five bucks, whatever, to because they wanted to help out people that are trying to fight for their rights, you know, the right to, you know, live their lives without, you know, having things forced on them. It's nuts. It's it's uh, it's out of control. But you know, it's not like I, I can't say I didn't warn you. Can't say that I didn't say it was gonna get tough. But remember, we're coming out of it. We're coming out of it. We only got a, a little more time. We got a little more time, I believe. they can track down like a little gelato owner and doxer and all that stuff and they can freeze the bank accounts of just you know people that are just trying to just make sense of this craziness and live their life in peace but you know you got uh i don't think i don't think like traffickers of children i don't think their bank accounts were ever frozen you know we just heard one of his uh, another one of his uh compadres you know, supposedly was found hanging in a uh, in the bathroom. You got to be careful the way you talk, right? You can't even talk about this stuff. But these powerful people, they get away with so many things. They're sick, right? They're sick. You know what was just in the news? Hugh Hefner, Secrets of Playboy. That's a, a series on A and E. It's like a ten part docu series. Man, I, I, I'm telling you, it made me sick to my stomach to see this, to see what Hugh Hefner is being portrayed as. Somebody who likes snuff films. You know what a snuff film is? It's not good. It's like the worst. Think of the worst thing that you can watch. That's, he was into that stuff. He was into that stuff. Also into drugging people, forcing them, you know, raping them. Having his friends rape them. This is according to this 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 docu-series just so spooky they had like a playboy cleanup crew for when people overdosed or when people got too hurt they had people like it was and how many people connected to him bill cosby even right remember america's dad eat your jello pudding oh it's so good it's so good especially if i roofied it he was um you know, america's dad everybody said and he turns out to be a monster a monster they're all monsters, these powerful people. And the reason in this, this article that I read, I guess, you know, when, when you have so much power and everything else, you, you turn to darker lusts. That's the problem. You, know, you start letting more and more of this demonic influence in and, you know, horrible things, things that are evil, things that are cruel. You can't, you don't get turned on anymore because you just, you start getting more and more corrupt. And what it does is it drags you down. And that's what they said about Hugh Hefner. He said he would take these young girls in and you know, he'd, he was like a vampire. Everybody describes him as like a, well, not everybody, because some people defended his honor, but they, they said he was like a vampire. He would snuff the light of goodness out in every single person. This was led by his uh, girlfriend, Sandra Theodore, and uh, head of promotions, Mickey Garcia, longtime bunny mother, PJ Mastin. All of them, and along with other playmates, they, they say really terrible things. He uh, took advantage, had raped his dog. That's what <laughs> and, and one of these things said. And then I guess uh, she walked in on him, his his girlfriend walked in on him and he said what the dog has needs to these are sick people so you got you got uh hugh hefner here being portrayed as like um the like a deviant and you wonder why these people in power these people that have always been in power they act like they're gods 
They act like they're gods and they don't care. They don't care because they're corrupted to the core. So where do we go from here? Like, how do we, how do we get out of that? You, know, you see these people in the, in the movies, you see these people on TV, you see these powerful people and, you know, even, you know, Wiener, <laughs> what a perfect name for this meathead, right? Wiener, he even, he went on Sean Hannity, I shared this, and he, he did prison, you know what he did? He, he with, with an underage girl, he sent pictures of his privates, he did all sorts of terrible things. They said that there is a laptop that made people sick. Now, I don't know if any of this is true. You're going to have to do the research on that, but it's in mainstream media, right? And But yet, he's he's getting a podcast, and then he gets a nice prime time spot on Sean Hannity, where Sean Hannity's trying to, you know, interview the guys like, are you sorry for what you did? And he doesn't even, he doesn't say, wow, you know, I really, yeah, I mean, I was really sick. I was really sick. I did the wrong thing. None of that. He's like, I don't care if people don't like me. <laughs> I did my time. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. These people, they just... It's, I mean, how obvious is it? It's so obvious Julian Assange comes out and says, I told you so. How many times does he say, I told you so? You know Tom Hanks, right? He's got a son, Chet Hanks. Remember the guy who, who like was trying to troll the internet saying that he's a part of the Illuminati and all that? Because he, he's got the tattoo of the all-seeing eye and he's got so many tattoos. And you could tell that the kid is troubled, you know? I mean, he's a, he's a grown man, but you could tell that he really is troubled. And he, so he did, he has this new YouTube channel and he just, you know, he just like did this whole expose on what it was like to be raised by Tom Hanks. Didn't seem to be somebody who was, you know, very loved. Maybe he was, I don't know, but the way he comes across didn't really have that male role model in his life. You know, because they what they do is they play a part, right? Who's to say that they're really good? I don't know, I can't make a judgment call, but I see a kid in pain, a young man, an adult in pain, still he's, and he was just in the news just recently because him and his girlfriend, Kiana Parker, they, you know, it was uh, like uh, domestic lawsuit things, there were like murder-suicide threats, and he, he like said he got stabbed. This is Tom Hanks's kid. Cosby, America's dad. Tom Hanks, America's dad. Right? They're not great daddies. They're not great daddies. I'd like to think of myself as a pretty good father. I love my children very much. We all could do better. But I mean, if these are our role models, see, this is why you can't put your faith in Hollywood. You can't worship these stars because many of them are very, very sick. Speaking of people that uh, many people say are sick, you know, Ye, who used to be Kanye, but then changed his light to Ye. Ye means light, the light of the world. Kanye is now the light of the world, I guess, when he's not wearing masks and looking weird. <laughs> he's he's now releasing, uh, you know, his, his Don to Two album. And he's only releasing it on a streaming service, his Stem Player 2, which I guess costs like $200. So... I mean, whatever, you know, let the guy do what the guy wants to do. So much nonsense with him and Pete Davidson and this is not healthy. 
the world is uh, it's 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 sick. So we need we need people like you to get it together, you know, to be happy, to have peace, to have joy. To be lights in this world because the world's getting darker. The world's getting so dark that it seems now this was in the uh, Daily Mail. I heard about this a while ago. China in 2019 said they were going to change the holy books. They were going to go through, they're going to check out the Bible, they're going to check out the Quran, they're going to go through and they're going to make changes. They're going to make edits. Remember how the Pope, that was like one of the only videos, one of my last videos that actually went viral. It was so simple. I went out in the back and I took the camera and I just talked to it because I was so shocked and blown away that the Pope said we're going to change the Bible where, you know, the Lord's Prayer, which is like one of the, probably one of the most important prayers, I guess, that J Jesus told everybody to pray when they said, how do we pray? It, it's, I, it's something to learn from. He didn't say, pray to me, say, oh, Jesus, or Yahshua, or Yahuwah, whatever name you want to go by. I know that that's kind of a hang up for people. I don't look at labels, right? Because you can't really label God. But he didn't say, you know, pray to me. He said, our father, he said, pray to God. He always directed people to God, which is ironic because, you know, it seems like religion has done a good job of keeping people away from God, pointing people in other directions. But our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven or in earth as it is in heaven, regardless of what translation or Mandela effect. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The Pope said, that's not right. I don't even know if he's Italian, but I like to use the Italian accent. That's not right. I think he's Spanish, right? Bergoglia, whatever his name is. He's an interesting one. Another one. Another one. This is the guy who leads the faith. There's so much abuse. They're so sick. How many, how many cover-ups, right? Even, even Benedict, the last Pope, was apologizing for how he handled things. How he, they didn't really handle much. They didn't really handle much. Oh, one priest is molesting, one priest is abusing in the most horrific way children. We'll just move them to another parish. That's the way we handle it. That's the way they did it. So messed up. But the Pope says, oh no, God doesn't lead anybody into temptation. This is the Pope, okay? This is like the head of the Catholic Church. It's not right. It's bad. So, they're, you know, it's, it's changed. But yet, Jesus was tempted, was led into the wilderness to be tempted. In, in Matthew 4, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. God led Jesus to be tempted by the devil, just as we're tempted. Christ was tempted in all points. So don't tell me God doesn't lead people to be tempted. That's why it'll you know, lead us not into temptation, because sometimes, you know, we, we need to grow. We need to learn that it's better not to, you know, do what Hugh Hefner did, because that's really bad. Powerful people that begin to think that they're God don't see everybody else as equal. So they do horrible things, which is why we see governments of the world now. It's like they don't even try to pretend that they're good. They don't even hide it anymore. They just come right up, just like Wiener says, ah, whatever, I don't care if you don't like me. Uh, am I changed? I, I think maybe I am. This is the way these people talk, so bizarre. So bizarre, but you know, China is, um, back in 2019, they were gonna rewrite the Bible and the Quran to reflect socialist values. And this was amid their crackdown of the, the, the Muslim Uyghur minority, which, you know, they supposedly showed the world that they, they liked the Uyghurs when they let him. If you haven't watched my video on the Olympics, check it out. So Todd Nettleton, Todd Nettleton, the uh, spokesman of uh, VOM, Voice of the Martyrs, like a watchdog group for Christians, told Faithwire about this project. This, this is a project that the uh, Chinese Communist Party announced in 2019. 
the time they said it would be like a 10-year process to release a new translation of the Bible, noting it would also contain Confucius and Buddhist principles, among others. This new translation would really support the Communist Party. Now, the reason why this is not great is because In a textbook for high school students released in September 2020, the authors included a passage from the book of John, John chapter 8, as revised in their new edition. Now this is where it gets really, this is just disturbing. It's the story where Jesus forgives, forgives the adulterous woman. The adulterous woman that everybody was standing around, she was caught in adultery, right? So they bring her out to the street and everybody picks up a stone because the law said to stone the adulterous woman. That happens today. Just so you know, you get stoned on Twitter, you get stoned in, on Facebook, in the comments section. If you do wrong, people want, you know, want to pick up stones and throw it at you. Religious people, they can be the worst. That's why most of them were religious and they wanted to kill this woman. And Jesus, we know, said, you know, he wrote down in, in the dirt. Like did a little thing that we don't really know what he did. Some people say he drew fish. Some people say he wrote words. But he said, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. And one by one, they dropped their stones and they walked away. And then he says to the adulterous woman, which is a beautiful thing. It's something that we should all listen to. The woman who is kind of blown away by being forgiven for, you know, what she had done. Jesus said, who is left here to condemn you? She looks around, there's nobody there. And he says, okay, now go and sin no more. It, it, the irony was at the moment, the sin was her thinking that people could condemn her continually, as opposed to realizing that there's forgiveness and there's peace and there's joy and there's hope when you have faith. Whoever the Lord sets free, he is free indeed, right? So. When God sets you free, you're free from the nonsense. You don't have to worry about what people think about you anymore. Stop sinning. Stop thinking the worst. Stop listening to what other people say about you and worry about what's in your heart. Do the right thing. The world will say that it's okay to act this way or that way, but that doesn't mean that it's right in God's eyes. In this world, it's become a pretty bankrupt place, spiritually speaking, because it's run by the devil, the ego of man. This is why things have gotten to be so bad. We call good evil and evil good. So Christ says, so where are they? Those, and, and the woman says, no one's here. Their translation is a little different. Okay, instead of saying, I don't condemn you either, now go on and sin no more. In their translation, after everybody walked away, Jesus then picked up a stone and stoned her and killed her and said, I'm a sinner too. And the Chinese government's new version, purportedly observed in a textbook, meaning that that's what they say is the truth. Who knows? This could be fake news because, I mean, it really kind of seems goofy to take someone who teaches that we should love and forgive and you're going to change it and all of a sudden he's going to kill somebody and then say, I'm a sinner too. Probably it could be fake news. I don't know. But I mean, a lot of, you know, this is the Daily Mail that's reporting on this. It's very, very, <laughs> very concerning stuff. You know, everything's a little concerning today, isn't it? That's why I think it's so important for us to have faith, so important for us to, to look for more, to not get too you know, stressed out when you see the world becoming like this. We got to put our faith in more. We got to put our faith in more. You got to pray. You got to see things for the better. Now, I'll tell you, last night I was a little bummed out because I'm seeing everything that you're seeing. And I feel, yeah, I said to Danielle, I said, I said, Dan, Dan. You know, the Lord placed me at the WWE where, you know, the ratings went through the roof, right? Then the Lord places me in my own, you know, my own sports entertainment show, boxing show. It gives it to me, just like I, I thought. Then the Lord puts me in Christian TV, the largest, the biggest. So strange. Then the Lord gives me this. 
one after the other. Every time I believed, I had faith, I saw the end from the beginning, if you will. Kind of God placed a desire in my heart. You know, you have a desire that God placed in your heart. That's why you shouldn't ever think that you can't accomplish it. You should continue after. That which brings you joy, go for it. Go for it. The journey it took how many years? I've been on here for 12 years. How, how long did it take before I reached more than just a couple of hundred people? You continue on. This is a journey. It's a process. And if you're not good with the very little that God has given you already, why do you think that if you had more, you'd do better and you'd be happier? I'm exactly where I need to be. I would love to have more subscribers. I know so many people that started watching me, got inspired to start their own YouTube channel. They're dwarfing my numbers. There was a time when that even bothered me a little bit. I look at people, I look at videos, sometimes people just turn the camera on and uh, they just talk. They don't edit, they don't add, they don't put a lot of work into it. They just kind of talk and they get a lot of views. It boggles my mind. Easy for me to look at and say, why, Lord, why? As opposed to just being grateful with what God has given me. And I remind myself, I'm exactly where I need to be, doing exactly what God wants me to do, and my goodness, am I grateful for it? Am I grateful for all of you? All of you that support me on Patreon. All of you that support me on PayPal. All of you that have bought the novel, which you know is like my, my uh, I believe it's probably my, like, my life's work, the, probably the thing that I consider to be just the, the dearest and nearest to my heart. If you don't know, I have a novel. It's called The Calling. I talk about it a lot on the show. You can get links. There are links in the description. Just go to Amazon.com. The Calling by Jacob Israel. It's sold everywhere, but Amazon, of course, is the place where everybody goes. And if you get a good ranking there and a good rating there, and it was a number one bestseller for new releases. You know, we did that. We did that. That was when I first wrote the book in 2008. This is a, um, a re-release, a second edition. I, don't know, I probably sold maybe a couple of copies, but look at it now. There are thousands of reviews all over the world. Just on Amazon alone, I think there's like 652 just for the paperback. But I'm grateful. I'm grateful. And, you know, so I got to stop looking and wanting more. Like, we got to stop desiring, being like, oh, this isn't enough. This is more than enough. This is a gift, this life that we have. And I know that the world looks so spooky right now. I know that it does. But I'm asking God not to lead me into that temptation, you know, because when we are tempted, just so you know, and Jesus was tempted, this is going to bother some people. So it, it, hopefully you're buckled up for this. Jesus was led into the spirit by the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Tempted. Tempted. Okay. And what is tempted? In the book of James, blessed is the man that endures temptation. For when he is tried, that means you're tested. Okay. He shall receive a crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted that I'm tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. God can't be tempted. Neither tempts he any man. It's not God that does the tempting. But we can be led into temptation to be tested. You see what I'm saying? But every man is tempted, check this out because this is going to blow your mind, when he is drawn away by his own lust and enticed. When you're drawn away by your own lusts and enticed, Jesus was tempted. There's a voice inside of us. We're in this carnal body, this, this, right? That comes with the, uh, that comes with worldly lusts. The lust for power, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, right? These are the, when we are drawn away by that, and Jesus was tempted in all points as we are. And if he can walk away, so can we. Because that's the power that we have. Because we know that when we get drawn into this lust, if we go after it, then we have sin. And what does sin produce? Death. And what is death? To be carnally minded is death, pain, suffering. You don't want that. Everybody wants to get this picture of Jesus like that he was so super perfect and everything was great, right? Well, the Christ in him, of course. You know, God's, God's spirit is perfect. It is good. And Jesus understood this. That's why in Mark 10, when someone came to him and said, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, this is in the Bible, and I'm not saying the Chinese version. I don't know if they've changed it. Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? Why are you calling me good? There is no one that is good but one, 
that is God. Why are you calling me good? No one is good but God. Why are you calling me good? Jesus said that. That's in the scriptures. You know the commandments. Don't commit adultery. Don't kill. Don't steal. Don't bear false witness. Don't defraud. Honor your mother and father. This is what you know to do. But why are you calling me good? What must we do? There's one that's good. It is God. Jesus pointed everybody to God. Jesus pointed everybody to God. Just as he went to God. He says, I go to my father and your father, to my God and your God. This is in scripture. Religion has made a mess of things. I had somebody leave me a comment, of course, again, with the new to the channel. So he says, oh, look at all the, all the messed up stuff, the, the elephants that I say a million times. My nanny who raised me, my nanny who I love so much and who passed, she loved elephants. I have a love for elephants. The candles, I don't, I don't know how candles all of a sudden are a bad thing. <laughs> But this right here, this is a hologram of me and the Dan Dan. I don't know if you can tell. Let me see if I can get a picture of it. That's, that's what that is. My, uh, my mom got that for us. I, th I don't know if you can tell. I don't know. But it's, that's, that was a gift. These aren't spooky things. Someone even pointed this thing out. Shiloh made this. Shiloh made this. This is uh, pottery. And that's, I, I, you know, I just, I don't know. I like all the stuff. I think it's interesting. Especially since people think that it's mysterious and I guess they see mysterious that maybe draws them in I don't know. I just want to lead people to the Lord I want to I want people to have more faith because I know that the more people that love the better the world's gonna get You love God you love others. That's it. That's all you need to do. We are sojourners here This is not the end for us If this is the end we are men and women most miserable. This is not the end So it's time we start living like we you know are destined for more, don't you think? It's time we we uh, gird up our loins, you know, strengthen ourselves. Stop being such scaredy cats. Stop looking at things and saying, you know, God can't act. God is going to act. You'll see. You'll see. A lot of people are uh, pointing out that Pluto is returning. I did a video on that. If you want, check out the video. There, uh, there'll be a link right up here. One of these one of these things. You'll see it pop across. Not during the premiere, but later. Watch that show. Watch that show because um, it was from last year. And uh, yeah, I knew about Pluto returning, Civil War and all. Last time it was here. Yeah, okay. So is that going to happen? I don't know. I don't know. But I know that there is a war going on within, and I know that God wins. So that should cause all of you to be happy. I hope it does. I hope that this show didn't bum me out a little bit. I'm doing this in the morning early. I'm tired. My voice hurts. And uh, it's not the best subject matter, right? You look at all the stuff going on. You, it's not the best. It's not the, the most. But yet we have this hope. That's where our faith should be. The world is messed up. So thank God that you see it. The world is messed up. Thank God that you see it and ask God to help you change it. Because, like I said, I, the other night, I was down in the dumps, and I said, the Lord gave me this, gave me this, gave me this, these amazing things that seem unattainable. Why do I doubt that what I'm doing here can't make things better? Why do I doubt that the world can't be changed? Why do I doubt that there can't be a new heaven and a new earth? But I've already seen it. I've already felt it. I know there's a new heaven. I know there's a new earth. So why do I doubt? Danielle kind of shrugs like this. And then I got a call from a friend. And the, uh, the impossible became possible. And we prayed that this would happen. It's just amazing. It's just amazing. I love each and every one of you. Thank you for uh, pressing play, for spending some time with me. Thank you for hitting like. Thank you for commenting and sharing. You know all of these things really do help. Telling your friends, check this show out. You got to watch it. You really should subscribe to the channel. The guy's goofy, I know. Just get through it. And um, it'll probably help you. A lot of people telling me that they're, they're doing better in life. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful. It's not me. Because this is my greatest gift is to be able to do this. It's not me. It's the Christ in me. It's the Christ in you. That's the hope of glory. I love you all. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. September 10th, Mars hangs closer to the Earth than
than it has in 6,000 years. Like the light that led men from the east to a child in a manger, it could well be a sign of good things to come. Thomas James shall be his name. The world will change because of him. In the small town of Bethel, in a time not unlike our own, a child with a great purpose is born. Years later, alienated by his peers and abused, Thomas suffers a devastating loss. When it appears he has nothing left to live for in the world, this is when his true calling begins. While trying to escape the sinister powers that be, a terrifying vision haunts him. Miraculous events seem to follow the peculiar young man as he struggles to come to terms with what he was born to do. The stage is set. The time is at hand. The truth will rise and a revolution will begin. The startling revelation of who Thomas James is, truly, will change the lives of those around him and set off a chain of events long ago foretold. There is more to this novel than one might think. Inside these pages hides a treasure just waiting to be discovered. So if you've ever wondered if there's more to life, or why it is we suffer, then this story will not only captivate you, it may just open your eyes to a truth that could set you free. Find out what is in us all that makes us heed the calling. Click it.